Hello and welcome to the sensors and the counter intel tutorial. A party Marty has requested this a while ago and I realized that this is a difficult topic for beginners but uh, it's very quick to learn so let's get started and uh, we start with the most down-to-earth sensor and this is uh, the visual sensor so uh, take a look at uh, this unit please just memorize it's here and uh, now we take a look at the perspective of red uh, which is uh, my enemy in this game and uh, here we have a civilian structure controlled by red and you can see that this uh, has a visual sensor so the fog of war is uh, disappearing along this uh, circular border and everything inside the circle is uh, brighter than the rest right so this is the visual sensor and you could see this uh, blue unit which was here earlier and uh, that's gone now and this is because uh, this unit has cloak so uh, now you know the first uh, type of sensor the visual sensor and you also know uh, the countermeasure namely the cloak right so you can uh, activate and deactivate cloak over here and as you can see if I turn this off and we switch back to uh, the view of the AI then uh, this is going to be there right so uh, very easy now which units have a uh, visual sensors well everything has a uh, visual sensors except stuff that's already dead and uh, wall segments right so wall segments not going to have any visual sensors this is a wall segment right here and uh, we have some stuff around it that uh, this wall segment should normally see if it had visual sensors but uh, it doesn't so it doesn't see anything the next sensor on the list is going to be the radar and I have a T2 radar over here so let me activate this and you can see that a blue circle is appearing this indicates that uh, we have radar coverage over this area and you can see how much larger this blue circle is compared to the visual sensor and this is very important most of your units it won't be able to properly function and the fire at the maximum gun range if you don't have radar so you can see how important uh, radar is but let us uh, deactivate the T2 radar again and instead activate the T3 radar so you can see that a red circle is appearing please ignore the red circle for now and instead we are going to talk about the blue circle so just like the last radar had a blue circle this one has a blue circle too but this time the blue circle is so large that it is outside the map border and this is why you can't see it but it's still there all right and you can tell that it's there because uh, these radar blips have appeared so we have a square over here and this indicates that this is a structure and this won't be moving because it's a structure and we have this rotated square this indicates that it is on the ground so it doesn't have to be a land unit it can be a landed aircraft or it can be a ship that has crawled on the land but it is still going to be some type of mobile unit that is on the ground right now over there we have triangles and um, this indicates that these are in the air and uh, it doesn't have to be an air unit it can be a transport that has uh, loaded some land units in there and these land units in the transport are also going to be triangles but uh, the triangle still tells you that this is in the air right now and we have some half circles uh, which are facing up right here and um, it tells you that these are in the water uh, specifically that they swim so there is another type of half circle the one that's facing down I don't have one here now but uh, you can imagine it just uh, rotate this by 180 degrees and uh, this would mean that uh, it is also in the water but this time it's going to be underwater like a submarine for example and you can see that there is a half circle facing up so a unit that is in the water but it is still on the land We'll talk about this one later. Some mobile units have onboard radar and this T1 Land Scout is uh, one of them. And as you can see, this has its own uh, radar circle. On top of that, it's finding something. It is a rotated square, meaning it has to be a mobile unit that is on the ground. And uh, what could this be? Well, easy. 
This is uh, the same T1 Cyber Land Scout uh, we have here, except this one has its cloak activated. And uh, you learn that the cloak is shielding it from visual sensors, but the, not against the radar sensors, right? This is how uh, this Land Scout is going to identify that uh, there is something there, but it cannot tell what it is because uh, the visual sensor is not actually working. After talking about the radar, we still need to talk about the sonar. So the sonar is uh, this unit. This is a T3 sonar over here. And you can see that uh, the sensor part of this unit is underwater. And that's because a sonar is used to detect underwater targets. Radars are just for targets in the air and uh, on top of the water, as well as on the land. But uh, a sonar is only for units that are at least partially underwater. So it's going to find a submarine that is completely underwater, it's going to find a ship that is partially underwater, and it is going to uh, find any unit that swims with a part of it uh, sticking into the water, such as uh, Cybern and uh, UEF engineers. But this is not going to find the units that are traveling on the water and the no part of the unit is underwater. So for example, a hover Seraphim or Aeon engineer as well as hover tanks are not going to be detected by this unit. And this is important. How to identify the range of your uh, sonar on the strategic overview? Well, it's going to be this green range over here. This uh, circle belongs to the sonar over there. So you can see the T3 sonar has a very high range. T1 sonar and uh, T2 sonar are going to have lower range and uh, there are several units uh, with onboard sonar and uh, these are also going to have lower range. But uh, the T3 sonar is uh, still a good example because uh, this teaches you that the water doesn't have to be connected in order for the sonar to work. So I placed the ship in here and you can see that uh, the top water is uh, clearly separated from the middle water by this land bridge and those two are not connected but the sonar is still going to identify the ship over here this is unrealistic but it is how this game works so uh, get used to it we are done talking about the radar and the sonar but uh, we still need to talk about the countermeasures against the radar and sonar and the counter intelligence against radar and sonar comes in two types there is a stealth uh, which is simply going to hide your units from the radar or sonar and there's going to be jamming uh, which is going to create fake radar images. Let us start with stealth and I've put all units with stealth into this corner. There are two types of stealth so there's going to be uh, the stealth field this is a stealth field generator and the brown ring is indicating the range of uh, the stealth stuff so anything inside this range is going to disappear from the radar and there's going to be the personal stealth and the personal stealth means that the unit is hiding itself from the radar but it's not hiding anything else by the way you can uh, read about all of this uh, in the bottom left so we have stealth field here for example and uh, we have a personal stealth here for example but uh, sometimes uh, there are some errors so I guess um, Let's go through all of these units. Uh, you know this one, the stealth field generator, generating a stealth field. We have uh, the personal stealth bomber for cyber, the T3 bomber. You can uh, toggle the stealth depending on whether you want to spend the power on stealthing it or not. Usually you want to do so. Then uh, you have the cyber and ACU that can equip the stealth generator in the back slot. Fairly inexpensive upgrade. Costs... Um, I think 50 power to operate and since the ACU is going to generate 20 power per second it's just a, a net of minus 30. Then uh, here we have uh, the spider bot for Cybern which comes with a personal stealth. So it says a stealth field here but this is wrong. It doesn't have stealth field, it's just personal stealth. It's not going to stealth the units around it. And the, the stealth on this one is fairly expensive at the 400 power per second but in the experimental stage you can usually afford it. Then we have the support ACU that uh, just like the ACU has uh, the stealth upgrade in the back slot, also inexpensive. And uh, we have the deceiver, so um, the deceiver is here, 
that's uh, going to be a mobile stealth field that is stealthing units around it, air units, land units, naval units, anything inside that brown range. And you can put this uh, deceiver into a transport and this is going to uh, stealth anything in that range still. So even though it's in the air, it is still stealthing stuff. You can hide bombers with that if the transport travels with the bombers. You can hide gunships and uh, you can hide anything inside this transport. So fairly good to know, right? And uh, here we have a Selen. This is a Seraphim Combat Scout. This uh, comes with personal stealth and you have to activate it over here. Costs uh, 5 power per second. And this also has cloaking. So um, if this is stationary, then um, pressing this button is going to hide it from visual and radar sensors. And then uh, the T3 sonar also comes uh, with stealth. This actually has a stealth field this time, so the brown range in here is the stealth field, and this is fairly large as you can see. Then we have the Mermaid, which is a counterintelligence boat. Uh, this has very good anti-torpedo, which is like the primary uh, reason why you would uh, build it. But the stealth field is still nice to have. Then we have the Barracuda, which uh, comes with personal stealth. And we have the uh, strategic missile submarine, which also comes with personal stealth. And the Cybern uh, ASFs, the air superiority fighters, also come with a personal stealth. And uh, you can toggle this, costs uh, 25 power. That's not a lot, but it adds up if you have a lot. And the spy plane is going to have a free personal stealth, which uh, is not going to consume any power. And if we switch back to the AI view, you can see that the well, the AI doesn't see anything of that, because um, it is in the radar range, but the stealth is enabled, so it's gone. Let us continue with the jamming. So we have some jamming units over here, and uh, I mentioned that this uh, is actually a target on the water, based on the radar blip, but it's clearly on the land. Well, this false radar image is obviously false, and it tells you that this is uh, a jamming unit and we can switch to the view of um, my stuff and you can see that this is a simple uh, frigate a UF frigate with uh, jamming and this is going to create false radar images then the UF support ACU also uh, has a jamming upgrade that is uh, relatively inexpensive and you can upgrade it if you wanna and if this uh, slot is free then um, go for it and this also creates false radar images the Siren T3 gunship is also going to create false radar images that makes uh, this look like a relatively large army even though it's just a single gunship and if you have more of them then it's of course uh, going to scale proportionally and uh, the T2 uh, field engineer for UEF, the Sparky, very good unit, is also going to come with uh, personal jamming and uh, and this adds to its uh, survivability even more so it has a lot of HP but on top of that it even has some extra functionality that uh, makes it more survivable so UF players uh, should probably build this every game so what are we missing well we are just missing the only sensor and the only sensor is going to be this uh, red range over here and this is uh, much smaller than the radar range of the T3 radar but it's also much better so um, this is going to um, counter the effects of stealth, uh, the units over here, and of jamming, the units over here. So if these units enter this dark red uh, range, then this is uh, not going to matter anymore, and they just appear as single targets. And uh, it also works underwater. So if we have some underwater targets here and uh, we have this Omni sensor over here and this is going to find the underwater targets and uh, even if uh, they both have personal stealth and they are underwater uh, they are still going to be detected by this Omni sensor. So you can see Omni sensor is pretty cool. So which units are going to uh, have Omni sensors? Well there is going to be uh, the Omni sensor ray which is just another word for the T3 radar and this red range as I said is uh, the Omni range and then uh, we have support ACUs and ACUs so all factions have uh, support ACUs and ACUs with uh, Omni sensors 
but there are two factions that can increase the range of the sand source. So Seraphim has the option to increase uh, the range of the only sensor on their support ACU and uh, this is going to be this range over here and uh, Aeon has the option to increase the range of the Omni sensor to the range over here and you can see that the vision range and the Omni range are identical in uh, the case of the Aeon ACU so this is a quite a good inexpensive upgrade and uh, you also need to memorize that the uh, Colossus is going to have onboard Omni sensor. This is typically underestimated by Siren players. So there are some uh, Siren players that go for a cloak laser ACU and they try to take out a Galactic Colossus. But the Galactic Colossus comes with onboard uh, Omni and they're going to identify the Siren ACU um, while it's still a uh, moving towards the GC so the GC is going to win since I just uh, mentioned the Siren ACU with the cloak so the Siren ACU has the option to have the stealth and cloak at the same time this is going to hide it from radar and also from visual sensors but uh, as soon as uh, this one is stepping into the Omni range it's going to be detected so we switch to the view of the AI and uh, you can see it's not here but uh, we fast forward a little bit and it starts uh, moving into the range over here and uh, you can see that it's going to appear on the radar there it is right so uh, siren players who use uh, the cloak upgrade need to be careful not to enter the omni range of the opponent because uh, they are going to be found out now lastly let's talk about the interaction between omni sensors and visual sensors so we have the cloaked siren ACU over here and the once uh, this is scouted is going to be revealed as the cloaked cyber ACU and as long as this stays inside this red range uh, this is not going to stay a non-scouted radar blip but it's actually going to stay identified as a cyber ACU so cyber players uh, really need to be careful uh, about the interaction between omni sensors and visual sensors Speaking about visual sensors, uh, of course, uh, there are some structures that are designed to provide visual sensors and do nothing but that. So we have the Soothsayer over here, uh, the unit that is uh, prominently rushed by Tokido. And uh, this is uh, really going to reveal everything inside the range. Combined with uh, Omni sensor, this is going to uh, find out uh, whether targets are cloaked and the like. So there is no hiding from anything anymore. And uh, we have the eye for Aeon players and uh, this is going to be a unit that you can aim at uh, any position on the map and you uh, spend some power and then you uh, find out what's there. So these are uh, some units that provide visual sensors. So party Marty, hopefully I answered all your questions and uh, any viewer who is also interested in this topic uh, is hopefully going to be well served. I realize that uh, this is not my most enthusiastic uh, tutorial I've ever made. Well, that's because uh, I don't think you have to attend the military academy to uh, learn how the sensors work in Supreme Commander. I suppose if you did attend military academy, this is going to be a piece of cake for you. But uh, this is fairly intuitive, even uh, without a military education. So uh, I hope um, there are no open questions anymore, because I want to be done with this topic.